Uh, good evening and welcome to this special Board of Education meeting. It is Monday, March 1st, uh, 2020, and it is 5.02 p.m. Uh, we are meeting via Zoom this evening, uh, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04 and uh, Emergency Order 12, Section 3. Um, I just mentioned uh, right before we got on the air that our clerk is running a little bit late this evening. Um, she works until 4.30 at the hospital, so... Um, Sometimes 4.30 doesn't mean 4.30, um, but she'll be along presently. Um, in the meantime, Mr. Corino, do you mind taking roll for us? Sure, I can do that. Thank you so much. Um, I may not get this in the correct order, but I'm going to uh, try. Okay, um, Ms. Bishop is not here yet. Um, Ms. Brown? Present. Um, Heather Raymond. I'm here, thank you. Sharon Giglio. Here. Dottie Oden. Here. Sandra Zeem. Here. Paula Johnson. Present. Raymond Garino is here. Gloria Timmons. Here. So we have a quorum, we have eight present. Okay. Thank we you, all, Mr. Oh, yep. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We also have uh, Dr. McKinney and um, Ms. O'Gara, Ms. Hines, Ms. Gingras, uh, Mr. Parker, uh, Mr. Andrade, and Ms. Kinsella. Did I miss anyone? I think that's everyone. Yep. Oh, Mr. Don Mr. Donovan. I missed Mr. Donovan. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Corino, and welcome to everybody. Thank you for coming out this evening. I know uh, we originally did not have um, meetings scheduled for this week except for budget on Wednesday, um, but um, Dr. McKinney called me last week to let me know that um, some of our teams have made the playoffs, um, which is exciting news, um, and Lisa um, has some questions for us regarding um, visitors at playoff games, I believe. So um, take it away, Ms. Gingras. Thank you very much. I'm hoping not to take too much of your time of your meeting this evening. Thank you for all being here tonight to talk about this. Um, in your packets this week, there is a memo regarding the ability to host visiting fans at our playoff games. I had had an extensive conversation with Director Bobby Bagley about allowing visiting fans and her team and had conversations with public health. And I just wanna make it clear from the onset that by fans or spectators, at all times, am I referring to immediate family members, parents of the players? So it's not just open the door and the first 50 people in the door get in. Um, each member of each team, all season long, what we've been doing is our home teams each member of the team gets two tickets to bring home to their parents. They come in, they give us their name and telephone number and sit socially distanced with masks on well far away from the basketball court during the game. So a, a basketball team will have anywhere from 12 to 15 players on it. So there's been about 30 people in the gym. What we are looking at for playoffs, playoffs for those of you who may not be wholly familiar with sports and playoff structures and playoff structures. Once you hit playoffs, if you lose, your season is over. Um, so for one of the two teams, it will be the last game of their season. And as you can imagine, for a lot of seniors, that's very emotional. And for their parents, it's even more emotional. So when we approved everything for winter sports, we had said no visiting fans, but now we're getting into the playoff season and we have an opportunity to host games. So in the memo, we're looking, South has the opportunity to, excuse me, South girls basketball have an opportunity to host tomorrow. North boys have an opportunity to host on Thursday and then again on Saturday. And there's been a change. The Friday game with North girls basketball would not be in our gym. It was originally scheduled in Keene. But they also had the same rule, no visiting fans, but they have since changed that. So our girls will be traveling to Keene on Friday. So we're looking to allow two visiting 
parent, two parents per student of the visiting team in addition to our home team into our gym so that our kids have the opportunity to play this game in their own gym. Um, if we are not allowed to have visiting fans, the two teams would play in front of both sets of fans just in the other team's gym. So our students are going to be in an environment with the exact same number of people. It would just be someplace else. So I'm hoping that you'll allow us and kind of adjust what we had decided in November, or I should say you decided in November to allow our students to play in our gym where we have a lot more control over the protocols and where people are sitting and wearing their masks and things like that. Um, so this is just for the next couple of weeks. And I know next week I come back to talk to you about spring sports. Thank you, Ms. Stringers. Um, I looked up this afternoon on the, well, five minutes ago before our meeting, on the <laughs> COVID um, dashboard, what the numbers are for today. Um, and in Nashua, the new cases per 100,000 is 295, which wow. puts us in the red, but it's significantly lower than it has been. Um, yeah. It's been going down. In January, it was in like the 900s. Um, it's been in the three, four hundred. So I'm seeing a downward trend there. Um, and then the seven day positivity rate um, for Nashua is 5.1%. Um, last time we met to approve hybrid, it was 8%. So um, that's in the green and it continues in the green. And our hospitalization rate um, is they're not even posting it anymore because hospitalizations are so low. Um, so that's all of the COVID data that I have for people um, as we make this decision. Um, but I think what I'm looking for is um, a motion to allow um, two immediate family members per rostered player for each team for the um, winter sports playoffs. And then we can have discussion uh, if we have a motion. May I oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah. Okay, so so moved by I, the order I saw hands. So moved by Miss Johnson, um, seconded by um, Miss Giglio, and seconded again by Miss Dean. Okay, Mrs. Raymond, may I just add one more thing? Yes, um, it is in the mem memo, but for everybody watching, we by we I mean Dr. McKinney and myself, we each had independent conversations. Um, with Director Bagley, and she does feel that we have the appropriate protocols in place to do this safely. Okay. And Thank uh, you. to be clear, um, this does not rescind any previous requirements. So um, we're just allowing two immediate family members per rostered player for each team, but we still require masks and social distancing, um, as is the city ordinance here in Nashua. Um, okay. Um, so I just want to write that down. Um, any discussion? No one has anything to say. All right. Well then. Um, miracle. It's shocking. Um, Mr. Guarino, do you mind calling the roll? Sure. Um, Jessica Brown? Yes. Um, Heather Raymond? Yes. Sharon Giulio? Yes. Dottie Oden? Yes. Sandra Zine? Yes. Paula Johnson? Yes. Uh, Raymond Garino votes yes. Um, Gloria Timmons? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Okay, thank you so much. Thank um, you, Lisa. Thank yeah. you all very much. Thank you, Ms. Stringers. And congratulations to all of our student athletes who are competing this week. Um, this is great that you've made it to the playoffs and um, I hope you play well and that you win. Um, so best of luck. Great, thank you. I'll see you all next week. Thank you, Ms. Stringers. Okay. So um, that was the quick part of our meeting. Um, the second part of our meeting is the discussion from um, the uh, superintendent search ad hoc committee um, regarding a contract 
um, and moving forward with scheduling with BPW and associates. Um, I believe we need a non-public with Mr. Clausen um, to go over the contract details. I'll make the motion if you have the number, the RSA. Yes, the RSA is, um, I think contract negotiations is um, RSA 91A32E. E. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Ms. So, Timmons. So moved. Okay. So Ms. Zeem makes the motion. Second. Uh, seconded by Ms. Timmons. Okay. Um, Mr. Gorino, can we please have the roll? Okay. On the motion to go into non public. Well, I, have, I have a question. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Brown. We plan on coming back out of non-public after we discuss the contract for the remainder of the meeting, correct? To do the yes. presentation, presentation. Okay. Thank yeah, you. but the, the negotiation portion of the discussion is um, exempt from the right to know law. So we'll do right. that in non-public. I just want to make sure. We'll come back out. I the goal was to go to non-public at 515 and come out 545. So that's my fingers crossed ideal scenario. Okay, Mr. Garvino. Okay, um, on the motion, um, Jessica Brown. Yes. Heather Raymond. Yes. Sharon Giulio. Yes. Dottie Oden. Yes. Sandra Zeem. Yes. Paula Johnson. Yes. Raymond Garino votes yes. Gloria Timmons. Yes. Motion carries eight to zero at 5.15 p.m. Great. Thank you so much. And please let the record show that uh, Ms. Bishop has joined us as of 513. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for your patience. It is 614 p.m. Um, and we are back in public session after our non-public. Um, at this time, I'm looking for a motion to seal the minutes under RSA 91A32E. Okay, motion by Ms. Johnson. Okay. Seconded by Ms. Giulio. On the motion to seal the minutes, Ms. Bishop votes yes. Ms. Giulio? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Odin? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Garino? Yes. Ms. Zeem? And Ms. Timmons? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, so the next item on our agenda is um, to meet with BPW and Associates. Um, so I'm going to hand that over to uh, Ms. Brown, who is the chair of the superintendent search committee, um, ad hoc committee, and then uh, Ms. Kinsella to um, invite, uh, is it Dr. Hill this evening? We have Dr. Hill in the waiting room, yes. Okay, great. So as soon as you're able to have Dr. Hill join us, I would appreciate it. Hey, good evening, Dr. Good Hill. Hill. Good evening. Welcome. Thank you for your patience. Uh, welcome. Ha have you met the board yet? No. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Okay. So um, before I hand it over to Ms. Brown, um, I'll have everybody introduce themselves. Um, Jen, why don't you just go in voting oh, order? I think we're also waiting for Kathleen. Oh, okay. Then I'll wait one second. Um, yeah, Dr. Hill, I actually just sent her an email. I think she was in our waiting room and maybe got bumped out. So we just sent her another message. To, she might need to her, come yeah, back. Give yeah, give her a letter now that we were on. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, do we wanna uh, wait for her? 
Or do we want to go ahead with introductions? We probably should wait for her and then so that everybody gets a chance to see everybody. That makes sense. So apologize for the technical difficulties. I understand. <laughs> wow. We think we'd be good at this after almost a year of it. You but. think, but you know, I've decided that technology is wonderful when it works. <laughs> and when it does it, oh, that and is true. Does. I um, was working with the group a little bit earlier and I'm not at home and I'm on my iPad and I needed to share a document. Well, I didn't know that you couldn't share from the iPad. At least I haven't figured out how to do it yet. <laughs> so it was, it was, he had to punt. It was, you know, I had to go back and say, okay, well, let's try this way mm -hmm. uh, in order to have it happen, so. Yeah, interesting. I didn't know that about the iPad. I, we couldn't, I, I'm, um, that should be Kathleen. I met my, my brother-in-law who's a technology person. And he just says he thinks it's in the application. Interesting. Now, in, in my case, I downloaded Office on my iPad and I was able to do it. Were you? Mm. Okay. Mm. Look at that. Now, now, now we have too. a clue. Thank you, Ms. Timmons. <laughs> but well, yes, yeah, I'm going to try that. Right. Welcome, Dr. Williams. Um, sorry about hey. the technical glitches earlier. No, no problem. We're, we're here now and we're ready and raring to go. <laughs> okay, so I thought I would have um, our clerk um, go around in roll call order and have us all um, identify ourselves so that um, you know who you're talking to. So. Uh, we can see the names, but that's great. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can make sure everyone waves ferociously, oh, really? <laughs> vigorously, so you know who's talking. Yes. So I'm Jen Bishop, I'm the clerk, um, and I will announce everybody as we go around. It's nice to meet you guys. Thank nice you for coming. Nice to meet you. Ms. Giglio, do you want to wave ferociously at the... <laughs> and then, uh, sorry, Ms. Raymond, I'm sure you know. Y'all met me already. Yes. Ms. Odin. Ms. Brown, I'm sure you are aware of her from... I think there's some committee she's on. We've had a few emails. <laughs> Mr. Garino. There he is. Ms. Zeem. And Ms. Timmons, who you also know, I mm -hmm. think. Paula. Ms. Johnson. And that's all of us on the board. And there are more of us here from the district. Do you want me to wave you guys in as well? Did you miss? I think you missed Ms. Johnson. Yes, you did. Oh, sorry, Ms. Johnson. And thank you. I want to thank Ms. Bell and Ms. Williams for coming tonight. Thank you. And we also have Ms. Kinsella from the district, Ms. Hines, Mr. Donovan. Oops, there he is. <laughs> and uh, I had to switch screens, Ms. O'Gara. And I think that's it. Did I miss anybody? No. Well, that's the gang. All hail. We're all here. And it's very nice to see you guys. And we're excited for your presentation. I'll have, um, hand, the, hand the meeting back to Ms. Raymond now. Okay. This is fun. Um, and, uh, so, <laughs> so welcome to both of you and thank you for coming. Um, so this is our, our full board. We called a special meeting this evening. Um, but typically, um, you all guys will, your point of contact will continue to be Ms. Brown for the board as she is the chair of the superintendent search committee. Um, and then also um, our uh, communications director, Ms. Hines, and um, our director of HR, Ms. O'Gara. Um, so Ms. Brown, did you wanna take it away from here? Sure, thank you, Ms. Raymond. So um, welcome ladies, I'm glad that you're here with us tonight. I'm really excited about your presentation this evening, but we do have one more order of business before we move on. So we um, met with our attorney a little bit ago and he took a look at the draft contract and he had a few minor edits to put in there specifically pertaining to 
the any spending above the seven baseline amount of seventeen thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and we just wanted to make sure that that's pre approved before we um, before any of that money gets spent through the board up to the amount of the twenty um, twenty four thousand six. So um, that's all that we that's primarily what we added into the contract. We recognize that you would probably want to take a look at that before you sign it, any kind of edits, but um, I'm pretty confident that you're not going to have any problem because it wasn't anything major to look at. So if it's good with your team, we'd still like to go ahead with the presentation for this evening, start to get the dates lined up and um, all that kind of stuff. I think hearing from about the process and um, in the timeline is going to give both the community and our bo other board members some confidence moving forward about how um, productive this is going to be. So if you're good with that, I think we do have to make a motion to approve the contract as amended, and then you guys can get back with us with the signatures tomorrow, if that's okay with you. That's fine. I think that's good. I'm seeing nodding. All right. Um, and Heather, can, is it okay if I make a motion? Yep, go ahead. All right. Um, so I'd like to move to approve the contract with BWP as amended on... Three one twenty one. Second that. Okay. The motion was by Ms. Brown, seconded by Ms. Timmons. Um, did anyone have any uh, questions or discussion before uh, we take the vote, Ms. Seem? Well, my my discussion was more when she was talking about the contract. She did not uh, add the fact. I'm concerned that they should be aware that you added the clause about uh, the two candidates in house. That is the other item of business that we, um, I'm sorry, thank you for reminding me, Maseem. The other clause would be that we would like you to add to your list of considered candidates, um, uh, any internal candidate, or internal candidates that we have on our list as well, which I think was something that you had planned on doing as they go through the process. Was Is that okay? That's with correct. That's correct. So the clause in the contract guarantees them a interview. It's yeah. Okay. Let me ask a question with regards to that. Typically we have the the um we as the team look at that and they're again included in as an interview, uh, both from the perspective of looking at their application and credentials as well as from a courtesy perspective. I guess my next question would be with regards to the board, would you also have them included in the board's um candidate pool? Uh, of that we would be recommending, regardless of where we saw that they fit uh, in terms of those that we looked at. I think okay. that would um, I think that would depend on um, how far through the process we how how far down the line we get. Actually, I can ask you this question because um, it's something we wondered anyway that we were probably going to ask during your presentation. Um, a few of the board members were wondering, what, how many candidates you're planning on bringing to us for final vetting process. And um, if we get to the point, if we get to the end game and we do not find any candidates uh, viable for this district, how does that work? So how many candidates and then what do we do if we're not pleased with any of them? Yeah, and that was actually something we were going to be discussing with you. Um, people uh, make application uh, for the position based on the profile that's developed with um, the community input that we will be getting to in a, a great deal of detail this evening. We then will interview the candidates that best match that profile and have the requisite background, et cetera. And then we generally will bring to you five to six individual for board interviews. And then typically that six is narrowed down to three. That's pretty typical. Now on occasion that's changed, um, but Deb, wouldn't you say that's pretty typical? That, that's uh, relatively typical in terms of the three. And if you think of, and, and this is how I try to help organize who's who, you have applicants and that's anybody that submits an application then you have candidates. The candidates are those people that we are moving out of the application phase that we've screened 
and we're recommending to you. So then they move from applica applicants to candidates. And then, so the, the intent is that, and, and again, it usually is five to six, it may be seven. And that was kind of why I asked the question with regard to that first level of board interview, whether you wanted to have your internal candidates as a part of that initial group. So that's the conversation you need to have because then it means that if we find five candidates that we believe meet the criteria, uh, then the question becomes, if you have two or three interview uh, internal candidates, would you like to have them included in that pool so that you may have as many as seven that you're interviewing? So that's, again, that's your decision. That's a conversation. Out of that pool, then you move to the semifinalist. And those then are the, usually it's two, sometimes it's, sometimes it's two, usually it's three, and in which you take through another process. And that process includes a second round interview, a little socialization with their spouses or significant others. Typically, we, we suggest to the board that they select a topic or an area for presentation. And so that that second round of interviews is, is more intense. Uh, you find out more information. The candidate gets an opportunity to find out more about your community. And then from that, semi-finalist group, you choose a finalist. And that's the person that you want to offer a contract to. And so again, you make that determination. And if you only want us to do five, six candidates, fine, we'll take the six candidates. And, and typically we use about an 80% um, match between the profile and the candidate and their application. But if you want us to automatically include your internal candidates, some of them may meet that 80% threshold. Some of them may not. Uh, but that's, again, your determination in terms of whether you as the board want to interview those candidates. And we suggest that all board members participate in that first round of interviews with those six or seven candidates. And because from that, you're going to decide who your semifinalists are, that top three, two or three, maybe four, uh, and then to vote on or to, to consider and decide who you want to offer the contract to. And again, that's something that the entire board uh, should be participating in. Uh, and then the second part of that question was, so what if we don't find anyone who matches? We recommend then that we continue to search. We search until you find a match. Um, I've only had one, two out of the last 15 or so years that I've been doing this, where the we did not find a candidate that suited what the board wanted to wanted was looking for in a candidate. So we meet with the board again and say, okay, this is what the profile says. What's missing? What else did you not see in those candidates that you're really seeking? So we then have to tinker with uh, that profile information and go back out. Sometimes we go back to the pool of people that have already applied. Sometimes we reopen the search and extend it, you know, yet another four weeks or so to see who else will apply and modify that profile. So again, we get you the kind of um, uh, superintendent that you're looking for that has the quali qualities and characteristics that you and the community have jointly agreed upon. Excellent. That that sounds like a great um, a great system if it's working. I think that's pretty good. I appreciate the fact that you continued the search until it finds the right fit. Um, does and that's at no additional cost. I also like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, uh, does anyone else have any comments or questions? If we go ahead and just vote the contract, and then we'll let Dr. Hill and Dr. Williams finish start their official presentation. Okay. All right then. Um, I don't see anybody. Ms. Bishop, are you able to take the roll? I am. Okay. And Ms. Kinsella, um, can you send that um, contract by email to Dr. Hill and Dr. Williams so they have it um, ASAP? Thank you. Wait, who just left? I'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Bishop. I think it was Ms. Williams. Ah. Okay. I'll let her back in as soon as she comes in. Okay. Thanks. 
Okay, on the motion uh, to approve the contract, Ms. Bishop votes yes. Ms. Giglio? No. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Odin? No. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Johnson? No. Mr. Garino? Yes. Ms. Zeem? Ms. Zeem? Oh, you oh. can't hear me? Yep. No. Did you say no? I she said, said no. no. You said <laughs> no. Uh, Ms. Timmons. Yeah. Can you not hear me? It was just, it was very faint. And because I wasn't looking at you, I didn't, I didn't get the full picture. Oh, so, Ms. You. Seem, you're saying no. That's correct. Ms. Timmons? Yes. Okay. okay. One, two, three. So, motion passes five to four. Okay, excellent. Um, thank you, everybody. So, we have um, an approved motion to um, approve the contract. So, um, once Ms. Hill and Ms. Williams uh, take a look at that and indicate that they're in complete agreement, um, then um, we can, I can sign it. So hopefully that will happen. So next, um, uh, Ms. Hill and Ms. I'm sorry, Dr. Hill and Dr. Williams, um, do you have a presentation for us this evening? Um, we have a lot of information for you this evening. And um, you may, if you feel comfortable, call us Kathleen and Deborah, respectively. And I believe um, Ms. Kinsella, I sent her um, a great deal of information, which I am presuming had been forwarded to you. And the um, primary document that we're going to be working from tonight is the Nashua School District Superintendent Search Process and Calendar Timeline document. I will be referencing um, the other documents, which included the draft of an initial posting, which I'm sure Ms. Hines will also want to add to, but that was just a sample. And um, additionally, uh, position advertisements, some of them that um, you may choose from, all some whatever that we'll be talking about later. We gave you a draft of um, a community survey, and I suspect that a number of these items you're going to have your ad hoc committee working on um, to fine tune and personalize um, using that as a base. Um, you additionally have a sample of an in, um, engagement information flower, flyer um, again, um, uh, Ms. Hines, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to be weighing in on that. Um, we provided to you also a sample of a focus group ske schedule via Zoom um, so that you could see how we move forward with that. You'll notice that on that one schedule, there's an additional column in the event you have so many different focus groups we may have to bring somebody else in to help gather information with us. Um, and then you also have um, a very uh, lengthy document specifically geared toward um, the board's evaluation of candidates and tasks to be performed. And we'll be um, talking about that a little bit as we go through this process. So our process is a really multi-phased approach. And we mentioned that in both the presentation that we gave to you, as well as the proposal. And the basic, there are basically four elements of that multi-phase. And the first is specification. And that's a big part of what we're going to be doing tonight. We all need to be on the same page and then we need to iron out some issues with regard to the calendar. And that's probably going to be one of the most challenging things that we're going to be dealing with. And um, 
we are going to go through lots of details and um, the first page, and I don't know um, if Ms. Kinsella can um, share the document so it's on the screen or you just are all looking at it from your places. I, which do you prefer? Um, can, I'm sorry, we can, I can certainly share for you, Dr. Williams. Um, uh, it does kind of obliterate everybody's view when we do that. So I don't know if you want me to pull them up and then we'll pull them down or whatever works. Well, that's up to the board. Okay. okay. That's purely up to the board. So I would say if we are going to share, and I think that will be helpful um, because um, typically we send out a packet and we post it on our website um, in advance of our meetings so that the public is able to access any materials. Um, and mm -hmm. since we weren't able to do that with these materials, it would be helpful for the public watching if they could see what we're talking about. Yes, yeah, um, certainly. Instead of me just having it open on my screen um, for myself. Sure. So um, having said that, I won't be able to see hands if someone has a question, because I can only see like four people at a time. Um, so if people could use the chat function um, to let me know. Um, and then Dr. Williams, is it your preference that people like kind of interject with questions or wait until um, you have finished? Um, we can do the interjections, but mm -hmm. um, with that being said, there, I may be answer, uh, Deb and I may be answering a lot of those questions, but if, okay. if you are moved with the question, definitely. Um, <laughs> This is all about informing you and helping you understand and answer your questions. So it's it's really entirely up to you. Okay. Thank you. I will um, keep a list so people who feel um, that they would prefer to use the chat and have me write your name down on the list for questions. Um, I'll leave that as an option as well. Um, and then we'll just go in order of who, who chatted first. Sure. Ms. Raymond, can I can I start before we um, because I, I want to make sure that there's some clarity about not only the process, but about the BWP approach to this process so that both um, the community and audience and the board are reminded of of our philosophy relative to the superintendent search. One yeah. of the key things is transparency. We believe that the more transparent the process is the more engaged the community feels like they are, the better chances for success of the new superintendent. So that's number one. And that, trans that transparency uh, then lends itself to the notion of communication. And so we will not be providing you with any documents up until we get to the actual personnel records of the, um, the candidates that we recommend that cannot be made public that can be, they can, and there's no need to FOIA. And so one of the things we're gonna recommend is that on your website, you have a special link to all things superintendent search so that the documents that we'll be going over today, once we've edited or modified those uh, so that they're, they're complete and they're clear, that can be posted. And so that anyone can go at any time to see what the process is and where we are in the process relative to that piece. So that's the first thing. The second thing is we want to ensure that all members of the community feel that they're part of this process. We don't want anyone to go away saying, I didn't know that we were doing finding the superintendent. I didn't get a chance to have a say so in that. You know, that should not happen. And one of the ways that you um, minimize that is by ensuring that if all of the members of the public know that they also share the information. So that one of the things that we particularly will talk about when we talk about the community survey is in ensuring that people know that one way to provide input is to share, to, to take the survey. And so I'm, I'm deputizing right now, everybody that's on this screen, you are now ambassadors of this process. And as an elementary school teacher, this is your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is once the survey goes up, each one reach one. So get someone that you know, whether it's your neighbor, your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, 
uh, the people that you see in the supermarket, anyone that's engaged in your community to go to your website, click the link and take the survey. And it will help tremendously by word of mouth. And that again is, again, your homework assignment. I'm anticipating that everyone here will get an A and that we will even have some gifted superstars who will get more than one person to take the survey. Uh, and of course, we would like for you to take the survey as well. But that notion of showing the community where their input is valued in the process becomes a critical mass in terms of the success of the next superintendent. And so I wanna put that out front. I want the community to recognize that they don't get to vote for the new superintendent as you, the board members will do, but they get to provide you with input and feedback about both your community as well as the skill sets and characteristics that you'd like to see in the new superintendent. So I think that those are, are pretty uh, important components, pretty important issues. Uh, both Kathleen and I, in terms of your, your website, want our contact information put there so that any community member that has a question about the process or the survey or the calendar or any of that and would like to contact us directly can do so. Uh, and again, that's just a part of our process. So I'm not gonna say any more about that, uh, but I will remind you periodically that you do have homework uh, and that I'm expecting A's from all of this group, uh, as well as from other members of the community that we'll be in touch with. Hey, thank you, Dr. Hill, I appreciate that. And I think you'll find that um, we're in New Hampshire and we have a high level of uh, community civic engagement, so. Well, you may recall that my um, daughter-in-law um, is from the Boston area. And when she married my son, they um, lived in uh, Derry, New Hampshire for many years. All three of my grandchildren were born in Derry. And annually, they go to, I believe it's Pleasant Lake in Deerfield, New Hampshire, every single summer to get a little bit more of New Hampshire. And um, I have spent a great deal of time flying to and from uh, <laughs> Manchester and going to Derry and traveling about your be breathtakingly beautiful um, state and um, the surrounding areas. So one of the sidebar I can say is that it is going to be um, a pretty easy sell um, for somebody to want to come to New Hampshire. And I'm well aware of the engagement that's there through my son and daughter-in-law. So just, just that little piece. Oh, great. So, um, I was saying um, that our multi-phase process includes specification, which is all about tonight. And it also, we will be talking you about recruitment and um, hopefully having you make some decisions regarding that. We, um, Deb um, already inserted a little bit about um, engagement of your internal and your external stakeholders. And, and then there is the selection process, which we're going to get to. Um, for the purpose of tonight, um, there are a lot of things we need to decide tonight. And I'm just going to tell you what some of those are. I'm going to go through the process and then we'll come back and talk about that. And some of them, I think. Kathleen, your voice is going out. Kathleen is now gone. <laughs> Remember what we said a little bit earlier about the technology piece? Yeah. Oh, dear. Okay. Um, why don't we go ahead and put that um, document, the multi-phase approach specifications on the screen so that um, we have that. Um, Dr. Hill, are you able to speak to it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Dr. Williams is back a little bit. Yes. I still can't hear her though. But Kathleen, you're on mute. My, I lost all of you and then it muted me. So tonight we're going to talk about um, 
the impact COVID is having. And based on the fact that all of you are conducting your meetings, we're suggesting and assuming that we're going to be pretty much doing a virtual search with you until we get down to perhaps the final three candidates. Is that something that, okay, I see a lot of heads <laughs> nodding. Lots of nodding. I think that's yeah. what um, our understanding is as well, as well as what Dr. Hill was speaking to earlier is having our internal candidates um, make it to the interview round. So right. it sounds like we're all um, on the same page, which is a yes. fantastic and way so to start. Then, um, Deb already talked to you about our confidentiality protocols. Um, that's a part of what our company does. We want people to apply and we don't want them to be uh, fearful that their current jobs are in danger, particularly if they are not moved forward. Um, she also mentioned the transparency and communication um, issue that we are gonna be getting into more detail about in a few minutes. Um, you talked about um, the letter of understanding, which we were going to ask you about. So check that that has been taken care of. We want you to be thinking as a board also about contract parameters, um, a range. Um, I don't know if you would be working with um, your with Dana on that, or you would be working with your um, CFO in terms of knowing what the parameters for your area are, but that's something you want to start percolating. Um, also, I just want to confirm with all of you that the liaisons, the, the people that we will be going to outside of the ad hoc committee are Jessica Brown and is it Tara or Tara? Either or. <laughs> oh, which do you prefer? Um, Tara. Tara. Yep. Um, am I correct that those two will be our uh, major liaisons to, to all of you? And then um, the ad hoc committee, we have um, Stacy Hines, Dana, Tara, um, board members, Jessica, Heather, Gloria, and Sandra, correct? Okay, look yes. how quickly we're just checking these off, confirming. So we're going to review the entire search process as we look at dates. And during this time, um, we're going to establish the search process timeline of which um, Deb and I have provided you a draft. This is very flexible. We do not know what your meeting schedules are. We don't know what your um, other business or um, attending. Um, we're on the next page, uh, page two. Uh, we don't know if you're going to be going to workshops or what. So we want to get a really good handle on the calendar and the timeline um, before we end tonight. And then we have to set dates, which um, hopefully all of you brought your calendars so that we can set some dates to look at when you're going to be interviewing, when we can meet with you, um, to share a slate of candidates and at the same time, provide a workshop to you to help you um, develop interview questions and an associated rubric. So you're all rating candidates with the same mindset. Um, and um, if you like, we can also provide a workshop on consensus building strategies. Um, we need to set some on that timeline. We're looking at when um, we would be having that community uh, focus group experience. Uh, we also um, want to um, have you look at some dates that will be in the calendar about reviewing that sample posting and changing it any way you need to so we can get the process rolling and post it post the vacancy right away. Um, 
we um, want you to be able to review that sample survey, maybe your ad hoc team make modifications and eventually you need to approve it. And I don't know um, with your ad hoc committee if you're, or, um, the board is allowing that ad hoc committee to approve the advertisements that are gonna go in the professional journals and or our initial posting, which will immediately go on our website and on your website. And when you hear Deb and I speak of an initial posting, I wanna take you back to what she said. We're gonna be engaging your stakeholders to develop a leadership profile. And those are gonna be all the characteristics, the details, the qualities that you're looking forward to hiring in your next superintendent leader. And the initial posting won't have that because we don't know what it is yet. So we need to have an initial posting that goes on our website, your website, and then we need to develop the actual um, advertising posting because that's gonna be a little bit, little bit more limited in the number of words we can have on any of those postings. We need to know from you um, if there's any customized services that you would like us to provide. Um, we have provided a sample of the survey in English. The question is, do you want it in other languages? Um, that's another decision that has to be made. And we also need to know which prof professional posting sites you desire um, to have those advertisements posted on. So let's go right to the calendar. And we're meeting this week. And so we're gonna ho hopefully be able to iron out lots of details tonight. But going into the next week, that's when we really are hoping we can launch um, our earnest recruitment efforts. Um, we need to implement a marketing campaign starting with that position announcement. And um, as I said, I gave you a sample one. And that initial announcement, you want to sell candidates on coming. Um, to New Hampshire and most specifically to Nashua and to your school district. So you wanna get that hook to have them interested in the position. And then you want to speak to, like I did in the sample, um, specifically from information I gleaned from your web pages and from the, the city's web pages. So as soon as we get that done next week, we're gonna post that initial position on our website, which will reach many, many people immediately. And then we immediately open our electronic web-based application system. So as soon as we post that, we could get people applying instantaneously, actually. Any questions about that, about next week? So I don't know, um, and I will, after we set some dates, I will um, give you an actual calendar um, that will talk about um, the days um, that we specifically decide, um, the activity that's happening, who's responsible, and whether or not it's happened, kind of a checklist, if you will. I will provide that, or Deb and I will provide that to you. So uh, uh, Ms. Zam has a question. My question goes back to the advertising that you were talking about and, and the cost of it. And I guess I would ask who's a, who is going to approve that? Is it going to be the chair? Is it going to be the committee, the subcommittee, or is it going to be the body as a whole? Well, that's something you need to decide. Okay. I, but I it guess, also goes... It also goes back to what you had talked about a little bit earlier and or someone had talked about a little bit earlier about approval of the cost for that, as well as the um, 
the actual organization. We will give you a list of the organizations that we're recommending and what the cost will be, as well as the time frame. For example, many organizations, you have to purchase at least a 30-day ad. Some organizations, you can have only a two-week ad. Some organizations have a 45-day ad. Some organizations are free. And so we usually start with the free ones first, but we put together a recommended set of, of advertisements and then you get to choose. You get to choose whether you want to do all of them, one of them, none of them, uh, and the time frame, and then you'll already have what the cost estimate will be for those. And you have that as um, one of your attachments that I sent to you. The cost. Okay, thank you. With all the with all the costs, and actually, I, I set I tallied them up so that if you hired everyone, with the exception of the New Hampshire Association of School Administrators. I could not find um, their fees for posting on their site. I um, sent them a communication and have not yet heard. And our one of our administrative assistants has reached out. As soon as we have that, we will let you know. That is one that I think um, is pretty critical. But if you added up everything that I had on the list, that would be $1,895 if you did every single one, with the exception of the New Hampshire Association of School Administrators. But it would be a very good thing to know as to is the ad hoc committee um, going to, will the board say they can decide or do you want to discuss that um, tonight and make that decision, which would make it much easier. So it, can I say, my, that, this is Dana. We have uh, an account with the New Hampshire School Administrators. Okay. And we also have a con an account with um, Ed Weekly and our rate is lower than yours. Wonderful. Good. We did not know that, of course. So thank you. And that's not our rate. <laughs> that's when we call and ask, that's what they tell us it is. So my yeah. recommendation for that actually would be that we have um, Stacy and Dana check it out for um, where we wanna put the advertisements. And then we, we actually do have a meeting on Monday night um, if they bring a recommendation for where we wanna spend our advertising money okay. um, based on that, if that's okay with you. Perfect. We do it Wednesday night because of the time frame that she's suggesting. Sure, either one, yeah, whichever one. Um, whenever Stacy has a recommendation for us, that sounds. If that's okay with you, Stacy, is that so putting you on? Is that putting you on the spot? That makes me happy. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, I actually have a list here already that I'd like to talk over with Dana. So if, excellent. Yeah, well, I was going right, to say, so. so maybe you guys could get together with uh, Kathleen and Deb and see where or do an email or something that yep. for their recommend based on their recommendations and mm -hmm. money that's spent. Perfect. All right. Sweet. Thank you. Great. And we certainly we have um, budget on Wednesday night. Um, we could certainly schedule if we have um, some information by Wednesday night, we could certainly schedule um, a short um, special board of ed then. And um, as Ms. Brown said, we do have our regular scheduled meeting on Monday night. Um, so anything could be brought forward then as well. And that would give the ad hoc committee a chance to meet if needed this week. So uh, we just Excellent. need to know by Thursday. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the week of March 15th through 19th, um, that's when we're hoping um, you're, you're going to make a decision about the actual sites, but we're hoping that um, a decision can be made about exactly what the advertisement posting will read. And um, I am guessing uh, Stacy and Dana, you're going to want to uh, be directly involved in that. Is that safe to say? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
at Pfizer. And does that timeline work for you to be able to um, actually um, get something written and completed so um, we can actually, the week of March 15th through 19th, and we um, are looking at a six week posting that of course can be changed, um, but we um, would like that formal advertising to occur that week, knowing that as Deb was saying, you are purchasing for different, different amounts of time. And the day you submit the advertisement isn't always the day they post it or advertise it. And um, so it could be staggered. And many of the um, ads are not gonna be, like Deb said, you, you're buying them in increments of time. So perhaps Stacy and Dana, you could also make a recommendation in terms of how long you, you feel within the budget that you have, you want those postings to occur. So we've worked with other districts that decide they're gonna buy two blocks of two weeks, et cetera. So if you could come with that recommendation, that would be very helpful too. No problem. Okay. All right. So um, when that formal advertising um, occurs in the national organizations, uh, we immediately start networking. Uh, well, we start doing that as soon as we, we uh, post, but with other contacts and associates um, that might match the needs that are initially in that advertisement. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is we're gonna go through um, a process to get a leadership profile, particularly by engaging everyone that um, opts to participate. However, some organizations, some of these professional organizations will not modify the um, advertisement that you posted. We can modify it on the BWP website, you can modify it um, on your own web page, but um, the actual advertisements, there are some uh, professional organizations that will not allow a change. So it wouldn't incorporate the um, actual leadership profile. So what we typically do and what I did on the sample posting was, um, I added a, a sentence that said, please check the website for a revised posting of the position for specific characteristics, qualities, and skills sought after. And once we will, um, once Deb and I um, create an audit for you of the feedback from those um, focus groups, from the community survey, from the um, all the input that we have, then we can put a date on there if we know um, tonight or when, but prior to the, the posting of when people need to check our website or yours for the specific profile information. All right, so just so you know that. Now in terms of um, the engagement process, this is where I think we will probably be utilizing that ad hoc group. Um, we want to um, have a group of individuals and, and maybe it's, it's um, Stacy and others that are gonna identify stakeholders that you feel critically need to be engaged in the process. So off the top of my head, you certainly want a representative group of teachers. You want students. You want your business partners, your community partners. Um, we're going to be interviewing you, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, if you've done a strategic planning process, you know that there are groups of individuals. You want to cross that 
demographic that you have in your community so that um, there aren't any marginalized groups that aren't being included. So we're gonna need, and I think that ad hoc group would be a perfect group to get together and say, what organizations do we need to have here? Can we combine them in a group of like six to 15 people? Maybe the Chamber of Commerce, maybe Rotary, whatever groups you have that you feel um, you want to invite to the table. Other um, post-secondary um, uh, institutions that you have, that if you work with them, if you're partnering, but you get the general idea. So we need um, to have a group of people identify the various focus groups that Deb and I are going to be interviewing. And you can um, invite people to be the specific representatives or in some instances, if let's say you have an NAACP organization and you want them at the table, you may say, well, you pick two representatives to serve on a focus group. And then the focus group can be of members of that group and any others that you have. But you um, are the individuals that know best. Uh, just one second, Sandra. And board members can also recommend, I'm guessing, to this ad hoc committee. So do you think that it's the ad hoc committee will, that will be taking this charge on? And Sandra, I know you want it. I, I can see you, so I can't see everybody else. But. How many is too many? I'm sorry? How many in this group is too many? How, what, what we said group? we don't want to have more than 15 people in a group with the exception of the um, community open group, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. So just Otherwise, I can't can't share very much. So one so, of the things, if you think in terms of the group size, you can have multiple groups as one group. So you can have the chamber ministerial alliance, but you don't wanna have more than 15 people in a focus group. But recognize both Kathleen and I can do six to eight focus groups on a day. So if, we're, if, if they're the two of us, so again, we take a look at your list of focus groups and how you group them together to determine um, how many we're going to be able to accomplish. We try to do this all on one day. And so that everybody is, is um, logged into a Zoom focus group. And that's why the, the sizes are pretty much capped at about 15. So, so just, to, just to clarify, I, I actually, you did a really good job. We will have, um, you said you can do six a day with, so six times two, we'll have at least 12 focus groups with maybe two representatives in each group from multiple um, organizations. My suggestion would be, um, if this is okay with, if this is the will of the board, um, possibly, I don't know, one of the days this week, either Wednesday or Thursday, we can get the uh, superintendent search committee together. We can have all the board members email us and actually if the community wants to email us groups that are interested and we mm -hmm. can start narrowing down um, those kind of assigned groups and see how we're going to divide that task up um, and come to a recommendation again with the, you guys probably next week. Does that seem appropriate? Yes. And even to the point where when you start looking at those groups, if you have, you know, more than that fit, more than, than it seems like Kathleen and I can do we can add an additional associate to come in and again, work on that same day. But that's one of the reasons why it's important for you to identify the groups and then pair them up uh, with a maximum of 15 in a, in a group. Uh, and then that will determine whether both Kathleen and I can handle all the groups that you come up with or whether we need to add an additional person to come in to do some other groups. And you need to separate, and I know Kathleen is gonna talk about this, but there's a focus group there are the individual interviews that we will be doing with all of the board members, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Then at the end of the day, of whatever day we've determined for the focus groups, 
there will be an open community meeting. And that's for anyone that wants to attend that didn't get invited to a focus group. For both the focus group and the community meeting, uh, participants have to register. So they will, again, once you set up the system with the invitation, they will need to register because we're doing this via Zoom and we want to uh, make sure that we have security and control over those groups in terms of who's coming uh, with regards to that. So it, it's not only the focus groups that people have an opportunity to come and voice their opinions, but it's also the open community meeting that takes place. And again, you'll set the time based on uh, your community populations and parents and working and all of that stuff. Uh, but usually it's you know six or seven o'clock and it lasts for uh, the same amount of time. It's about an hour uh, activity. I just want to say one more thing before Kathleen um, concludes that part. Every group, the focus group, the interviews, the community forum, and the survey questions that we talked about are really responding to the same four questions. Mm -hmm. What are the strengths of the district and community? What are areas or issues uh, for the community and the schools? What are the skill sets and characteristics you would like to see in a new in the, the next superintendent? And uh, what other considerations should the board have when they're interviewing and screening these applicants? So all of these pieces, all of those, those components are related to those four questions. Excellent. And I think Stacey Hines might have had one question as well. <laughs> Actually, you answered my question. That's exactly I want to clarify that the, the the interviews, the focus group, the community meeting, and the survey are all focused on uh, gaining data to develop that leadership profile. So you end up with both quantitative and qualitative data. Right. And again, it's about an 80% level. Okay. Thank you. And actually, I had one more question just procedurally. Um, when we determine the groups that we want to have representatives from, should we reach out to ask them or do we give you the groups that we're interested in having contribute um, and you reach out to them? No, you're, it's your outreach. I think, uh, Kathleen, I don't know if you included a sample invitation, but you invite, them. You invite them to participate. Uh, you've not only identified the group, but you've also given them the parameters in terms of the number of representatives uh, that they may wanna consider. And then they make that determination who from their uh, particular stakeholder group they want to send. But all of that comes from the district, uh, comes from the board uh, in terms of that invitation with regards to community engagement. Okay, thank you. Um, and I'm just gonna jump in there. Um, all of that kind of work, just like when we did our um, ad hoc committee for our strategic plan. Um, all of this work, uh, as far as the focus groups and identifying them will be done at the superintendent search ad hoc committee level. Um, board members are always invited to attend. Um, and we got some recent clarity about that. Board members are able to attend any committee group they want to and participate in that committee. Um, they just don't vote, um, but this way, uh, we don't have the, the burden of having to have all nine members clear their schedules, um, possibly more than once a week, um, to meet with the um, ad hoc committee uh, to, uh, to make all of these uh, focus group kind of decisions. So, and we will bring to the full board anything that needs to be approved by the full board. So we um, generally leave um, uh, a week for people to be able to RSVP to you so they can set aside some time to attend um, those focus groups. So the week of March 15th through the 19th, um, you will have identified the people you wish to invite. You will have created an invitation. And I, I did give you a, a sample copy um, just um, so that you um, would have something to understand what might be sent out. And certainly, um, Stacy, you may have, you may totally rewrite it. Um, that was just a sample. Um, but then uh, once the invitations are ready, 
then the week of March 15th through the 19th is when you want to um, extend those invitations, make sure you have an RSVP process and a deadline so that uh, together we can finalize a schedule. And then um, by that week, um, we also would like to have that online survey amended and or approved. I gave you a sample of that and no doubt you're going to want to edit that. I tried to include some things that um, from your website um, on what you're working on um, and the demographics that you have in your community could be embedded in that, but you certainly um, can make modifications as you deem fit. And um, we want to, it's, it's not just um, important that we create that, it's that we give notice of the survey, that it's advertised and posted in the best possible ways that you can to reach your stakeholders so they know that it's there. And we are looking right now to launch that survey on March 19th. We have a person with whom we work that will, um, I don't know if they'll be working with you, Stacy, or they'll be working with um, the tech director, but our person will um, can post the survey and can remove it depending upon what your tech person um, wants. But we take, you don't have to worry about that if our tech person can have access to the, the, the site to post it on. And then we also take it off. And um, it's usually, our surveys are posted for two weeks. So we've invited um, focus group members. We've got the open call for community members, which they still have to RSVP. We launched that survey. And then um, Deb and I will be looking to um, set some dates and times um, with each board member. Um, usually takes 30 to 45 minutes. Um, it's um, confidential between us. However, with that being said, we generally will create a report if the board so desires of the feedback that came from the board regarding what do you view as the strengths of the district and the community? What do you view the challenges as? What are the characteristics or qualities you specifically are looking at? And what other things do you think the board should be considered? And one of the other things we do ask every single focus group and the community group, and we will be asking you, do you have any nominations that you would like us to reach out to these individuals, letting them know, not who, but that their name came up here, the, it, the position is posted, and like anybody else, they are invited to um, apply. Deb, did you want to add anything to that with regard to nominees? No, my, this is again where your homework assignment comes in. Once the survey is launched, that that officially starts your homework assignment. So that I want you to, to you know, keep in mind in terms of the calendar. The other thing is that one of the things we promote during the focus groups, again, is to encourage people to take the survey. So that's why you'll see that there's a little bit of, of time difference between the date of the focus group and when the survey closes. We will need um, to set a date for um, the day we will have the focus groups in the community forum. So, um, we can do that now or come back to it. Why don't we come back to it and I'll get through the whole process and then we can um, go back to all the dates we need to schedule. So then on April 2nd in my draft um, 
calendar, we're looking at closing the survey. And by the way, it will be at midnight. People get a little like, when is it closing? The whole day it's open. And when we close it, you know, on April 2nd or whatever day um, you decide, if you if you don't like that date, um, it goes till midnight. And then um, our tech person actually has it scheduled to be closed after two weeks. And then um, Deb and I um, take the information uh, uh, that we have gathered from all of the focus groups, the community forum, the survey, and we pull uh, quantitative data from that in a report for the board, as well as the qualitative piece. Um, in the survey, we allow, um, if you so choose for people to make comments, um, and then we pull um, comments together and we encourage you um, when we bring the full report to you and that matter of transparency, that um, that report uh, survey data um, and the community forum input um, is posted on your website. So people actually do know that um, we listened and we provided you with the information. The board actually will then need to approve the leadership profile. Yes. So it'll, it, once we've done the presentation of here's all the data, here's all the information based on our, and we do um, a frequency distribution analysis of all of that data and come up with a list of probably 10 to 15 skill sets and characteristics that again collectively across the communities uh, identify the skill sets and characteristics you're looking for and as a board you are given an opportunity to review that and to determine yes this is this seems like pretty accurate or this one I'm not so sure about uh, but we actually provide you with that profile to approve. And then that becomes the blueprint for analyzing, for screening, for continuing our recruitment, for your process of interviewing, for your process of reviewing, for your process of selecting. And again, the community now knows what we're looking for and why. And so once the board approves the profile, that's when we revise the job posting on our website. Um, it will be um, revised on your website in any of the advertised websites that will allow that to be changed. Um, and again, that's why that sentence at the bottom of all the advertisement postings is so critical saying by this date, you need to look back at the website to see the specific profile or something to that effect. Um, and then a formal announcement of that leadership profile once approved needs to be provided to the stakeholders so that they know what the outcome of their time and efforts and the people who completed the survey know that this is what um, came of all of that um, information. So um, that's that transparency piece. And um, we will uh, work with Stacy to make sure at those critical points of the search that we're constantly sending out information to keep people abreast of what's going on. And hopefully, Stacy, there's going to be that prominent space on the web page so people don't have to dig to figure out where information about the superintendent searches. And Deb and I have um, gotten very frustrated um, with some um, school districts because they bury it and people can't find it. So it will be a shining star for all of you um, to be able to make that information easily accessed so they can read what's going on. And we can- We will. I we know. Will. We'll take that forward, yep. Yep, great, thank you. All right. Um, 
flip the page here. Let's go on to April 23rd. If you could, yeah, thank you, Tara. Um, and on April 23rd, this is approximately six weeks after we posted, um, we're looking at closing the search. And immediately after we, um, or not close the search, I beg your pardon, close the applications, we will immediately move into the selection process where Deb and I will review um, the applications. And by the way, um, we are notified every time somebody submits one. So we can be looking at those as they're submitted, but um, they can go back, they can modify. So immediately after we close, we spend a great deal of time reviewing every single applicant and we assess the qualifications and we will determine which candidates best match that district profile. And then we'll screen as we started out this conversation to five to six um, individuals um, for board interviews. And that may change determinant upon um, your desire um, to add some um, people uh, based on our initial conversation. Um, before um, we bring forward a slate of candidates to you, um, we conduct a very extensive research into each candidate's backgrounds, including online profiles. We contact their references, we speak to people, and um, just a, a comment, um, as a school district, I am sure you have a protocol and Dana, I know you are there somewhere where you conduct um, your criminal background checks on every single hire, is that correct? We do that in HR every day. Yeah, so we're counting on you to do that. And that's the only thing we won't be doing is and the that's, criminal. That's, and that's essentially for the final candidate, not necessarily yes. for all the yeah. previous That's uh, correct. Candidates. Okay. Um, okay, and so then uh, we say the end of the week of May 3rd, um, it takes us a while um, to interview. It takes us a while to do um, the phone calls and the background checks, but at the end of the week of May 3rd, um, we are looking to bring a slate of candidates. And I pulled this um, law that said the responsibility of hiring the superintendent rests with the board. And so um, we will be wanting to set a date with you as to when we can present that slate to the full board of education. And at that time, we will provide you an extensive review of each candidate in a, a narrative along with their qualifications. And in addition, we will provide you with a report that entails um, the total number of people who applied for the position, the positions they currently hold and the states from which um, they reside. So you will get that report along with the slate. While we bring that to you, the board needs to approve that. And then um, once the board does approve the slate, then we will open a portal for the board to review all the documentation that has been submitted by candidates. Deb, do you want to go into a little more detail about that portal and the confidentiality yeah. issue with regard to that information? Uh, because these are personnel files uh, and we don't want the copies floating around, what we do is we create uh, a secure Dropbox. And once you've approved the slate, then one of our technicians will send you an email that gives you the link to the Dropbox and the password to the Dropbox. And the Dropbox materials will be everything that we've received as a part of the application process for those individuals that we presented to you as candidates. Uh, you're, the 
the reason it's set up in a Dropbox is in as much security as we could provide relative to those personnel files is that you cannot download them or copy them. Of course, people figure out ways to work around it. But uh, in essence, it's we will ask you to consider signing a confidentiality uh, document and statement saying that you will not be sharing this information with anyone outside of the board. Uh, it protects you. It protects the candidates. Um, and then uh, there's a certain protocol and procedure for the actual Dropbox. You will, the Dropbox will be open for the first six candidates. And then when you have narrowed it down to your semifinalists, the candidates that you're no longer considering, their documents will not be accessible to you. Uh, again, and you'll continue to just have access to those candidates that you are seriously considering. Once you get to your finalists, everybody else's materials will be uh, removed and we will then send you a hard copy packet um, of the six candidates that you, I'm sorry, of the three candidates that you reviewed for the final uh, semifinal round. And that way you will have hard copies of their information, but it really is a protective measure uh, for both you and the applicants. One of the things that we find is that your applicant pool, uh, the more confidentiality you attach to this process, the deeper your pool is, the more uh, people will take a risk. Uh, it does not help when their names are out there and they're not even considered one of the semifinalists. It really puts their jobs in jeopardy. Uh, I could tell you a couple of horror stories of uh, information leaking out uh, to the public about who's interested, who's applying, et cetera, that has, has caused people to lose their jobs uh, and not even you know, become a part of the district that they've applied for. So your pool can be deep and your pool can be substantive uh, the more you lean towards the confident confidentiality of this process. So um, can you scroll up, please, Tara? Thank you. So once we've approved a slate, um, Deb and I want to arm you, prepare you as best as possible to um, develop some skill sets to interview candidates. And um, I always tell boards this, bear in mind that while you're interviewing candidates, they're interviewing you right back. They want to know, do they want to work with you? Do they want to come to that district? So just keep that in the back of your heads. While you're in control of the interview, um, people, the, the candidates want to know, they're, they're looking at how you interview, how you interact. So we will go over all kinds of things like that with you, and we will um, conduct a workshop with you to identify the key questions. We give you, we can give you a huge number of questions. We can talk about who asks the questions, how you are more comfortable doing that, and then ultimately how you connect it. Those questions have to be connected to the leadership profile. So you can see that leadership profile, this is what you've said you wanted. Now we have the questions that are linked to that. And then we also provide you with a rubric so that you're all on the same page. For example, what does a one mean? What does a two mean? What does a three mean? So there, there shouldn't be a lot of discrepancy between um, your rating of, of those candidates. Um, we will also um, talk to you about what's legally permissible and not permissible to ask. I remember um, when I was interviewing for a position, um, a board member asked um, how I could be a mom and um, an assistant superintendent of schools. And I mean, that takes you aback a little bit. And I remember saying to the, him, he owned an Ace Hardware, how was it that he could be a dad and owner of an Ace Hardware and manage it? And it's, it's the same kind of thing, but it was very off-putting to me um, that that question um, would be asked. 
So we will talk to you about that. And then if you so choose, we will identify um, strategies that help um, can b- uh, bring your board together. I, on my last superintendency, I had nine board members and um, we used a number of strategies when we had particularly challenging decisions to make um, on how to build consensus. And we would be more than happy to do that. And then um, starting the week of May 10th, um, you will begin virtually um, interviewing that first round of candidates. And we need to, um, if we can set those times tonight, um, that would be great. Um, We will actually, um, when you give us those dates and those timeframes, Deb and I will actually contact and schedule candidates for you. Um, You're going to want to decide which questions you're going to ask, who will ask and the tools and instruments you're you're going to be using during the process and um, determine in advance. So your whole board knows um, what's our decision-making process going to be. And then of course, you're going to want to select your finalists. And again, we will um, contact the people who are moving forward as well as those candidates who are not. And then the week of May 17th through the 21st, um, the full board will have the opportunity to conduct its interviews with two to the three um, finalists. Um, At that time, as Deb mentioned earlier, this helps you have a deeper um, conversation with these candidates, really getting to know how good of a fit they're going to be for Nashua. And in many instances, we find that it's very helpful if you ask the candidate during that final interview to do maybe a brief 10 minute presentation, for example, on what would your first 90 days be like? And that will tell you a lot about where they will be spending their time with whom, et cetera. But we can talk about that more at that time. And then again, you'll determine the strategies you're going to use to narrow down to your final choice. Um, Once you make that that final selection, uh, you need to decide some districts like to have a site visit um, in the district and community that isn't done um, as often anymore and particularly um, during COVID times, but that is something that um, you will want to decide. And then, um, as you heard me say, Deb and I notify um, people up to this point as to who was selected. And it is, um, we think, um, a much nicer introduction if when, if and when your board decides on the final candidate that generally your um, Board of Education president reaches out or whomever you choose to notify that candidate of his or her selection. It's your first opportunity to share really positive news. And again, we will um, select those individuals or we will contact those individuals who are not selected and um, then contract negotiations commence. And we're suspecting that that will occur May 24th through the 28th, supposing that it will only take one week. And this is a a draft and obviously very flexible. Um, And I am presuming you're looking at a July 1, 2021 start date. Um, And, you will have enough time to do some transition planning with the new superintendent um, and the district, et cetera. And then we're thinking um, June 1st through 4th, again, um, this could be changed where there is formal board approval of a contract and then um, a presentation, introduction, communication to your community, 
everyone announcing um, the next um, great leader of the Nashua School District. So that takes you through um, the process with some dates. And now we need to go back and actually have you pull out your calendars or do you need to take a break to go to the bathroom? Well, I'm, and Sandra has a question. Well, my, my question is, I think we have a vacation week in April. Is that not true, Heather? And if it is, can you remind me what it was or did that affect this calendar? Um, yes, we do have a vacation week in April. It's the week of April 26th uh, through the 30th. Well, does that, is that okay? Does that cause any problem? Yeah. Well, well one, I, of the, one of the things that will happen is as you now go back, now that you've seen the full scope of this, now you need to go back and to tinker with it. And we may not get it all finished tonight. Uh, this is a, a flex calendar. So now you need to plug in because you'll also want to look at other things that may be happening in the community. For example, if there's something going on virtually, uh, you don't want to schedule you don't want to schedule your focus group community meeting on that same night or maybe even in that same week. So the intent was to provide you with um, kind of a, a guesswork calendar, and now you can go back and and actually um, plug in some dates. Uh, from my perspective, the hardest dates are for all of the, to pick the dates for both the first round interviews and the second round interviews where all nine of you will be available. That's tough because you're gonna need to be available for on, on two different occasions for three semi-consecutive uh, timeframes. And so that will be a, a real challenge. And if you can even just get through that tonight, uh, that will set you up uh, because we work this calendar backwards from the day that you, um, you've indicated, you know, wanting to have someone start and everything else then becomes a domino effect. So if you push things forward or push things back, it has a tendency to have an impact on whether you can actually have six weeks in application, whether you can have these particular dates for a report. So that's one of the, the tinkering pieces that you'll need to do tonight. Uh, and then I just need to say, I'm going to, going to have to leave in about 15 minutes and Kathleen will continue to work with you. And I have a, a Zoom meeting that I'm hosting, so I can't even fake it and not, <laughs> and not show up uh, because I have to let everybody else into the meeting. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Hell. So what exactly do we need tonight as far as dates go? I don't think that April vacation will be too much of a problem because our district offices are still open that week. But that's when we're going to be doing um, our applications and our interviews. So it has zero impact, impact. on you. Mm -hmm. yep. I just oh, noted so that in the calendar as well. So, <laughs> so yeah. what, what, as Deb said, um, would be really, really helpful is for the board to look at their calendars um, for the week of May 10th. And Deb, how many do we can do two or three days depending on their availability to interview those six candidates? And yes. it depends. And what you wanna think in terms of, let's say you're working with six. So you're going to want to have, you can, can really only realistically do two an evening. So if you have six, that's why I said you're looking at three evenings. When you are doing your semifinalists, your top two or three, each of those really needs to have an evening or a set time in and of itself for one, for one candidate, for one semifinalist. So again, you're really looking at three days within a week in which you are available for probably about three and a half to four hours. For each candidate, your first round candidates, you want to give them about an hour and a half. And for your second round candidates, you want to give them about an hour and a half to two hours for the actual interview process and building into that some social time where you may get to meet their spouse or significant other. And again, depending on where we are with COVID, we're recommending that that's a face-to-face, -face, that second round interview. Uh, and depending on uh, what you determine you want to utilize in terms of additional community input or feedback that would now, be thanks that second, for mentioning that i, that I second round, over that 
Yeah, the second round interview would be when that happens. And it could, again, be an online um, a virtual communication with people who participated in your focus groups. The intent, however, is that one set of community members would only engage with one of your candidates. So again, that gives you an opportunity to have multiple groups, but they would only be interacting with one candidate and then providing the board with feedback about that candidate based on the profile. So you say, here are the things we're looking for. You're gonna have a chance to meet with this candidate or listen to this candidate from you know, this point to this point, this point to this point. You want your staff to be able to do that. You want your, your uh, teachers, you want some community people, you want some parent groups to be able to have that opportunity. And again, one of the documents that we share with you or, or uh, provide as a, as a sample is what that community feedback would look like. The document that people would be asked to complete. And then that information is, is gathered and shared with all of the board members as you are now considering each of those individual candidates. So it sounds a little complicated, it's much easier than it sounds, but that's why you're looking at that window of time that you're going to need where you all can be there. You know, you can't have somebody who's got to go on vacation or who has to do something it really has to be a, a uniform time when all of you all together to hear all of those candidates and uh, semifinalists. So with that said, would anyone have a problem if we're looking at the week of May 10th to do, that would be Zoom interviews for that if we did two, 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 right? Yeah. Um, would you all want to do just 10, 11, 12? Of so May? a couple of things, Sandra has her hand up. Um, and we have finance on the 11th, we could potentially oh, okay. move. Go ahead, Sandra. I have a, I'm pretty sure I have surgery in May. <laughs> oh no. Well, and I'm, it's all right if I, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't want it to, I certainly don't want it to appear that I, that I don't consider this to be a priority because I certainly do, but I had to wait six months to get this, to get this surgery. Um, and and I'm th I thought it was May fifth, but I I was that's why I went running out to try to find the mm -hmm. documents, and of course I couldn't find the documents, but I'm sure it was in May, and um, and I'm not even sure. I don't think it's any. I don't think it's going to demobilize me for the whole month of May. Uh, um, immobilize me, excuse me. Uh, but I do. I, I thought it was May fifth, is what I want to say. But but I but I don't have that document in my hand right now, so. If it's that first week in May, um, Ms. Seam, do you think that you would be um, recovered enough to participate in interviews the week of the 10th? I believe so, because I, I, I think it's, it's uh, I think it's the last, it's amazing how fast they put you out today. <laughs> yeah, you go they in do. one day and the next day they say, we don't want go you home. here anymore, go home. <laughs> and that's oh, when the, the good news is it's virtual. So you could actually be in a bed. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Watching well, and no one would know. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's the other, the other um, thorny issue for us is that um, we need to know how much needs to be televised so that we can work with our partners at ETV. Cause if the public meetings law in New Hampshire says that if, if we're having a public meeting, it needs to be accessible to the public. Um, so anytime we meet publicly, even if the public isn't interacting in the meeting, they still need access to it. Um, so I would believe that the, the both rounds of interviews would qualify as that, but. I actually think maybe it might only be the second round. Of second round? I, think so too. I think, I think the first round would be um, uh, like a non, a, 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 non-public. Yeah. Okay. Not public, and then the second round would right. be public. Yeah, Ms. Kinsella is nodding as well. So that makes it easier because um, then we don't have to worry about meeting in public versus meeting virtually and how to do that. And if you're if you're going to engage the public in meeting um, the the three final, if there are three, the finalists, um, then it's public anyway. So right. we would just need to notify the candidates and they would be, that's not atypical. So, but we would definitely let them know. It's less typical 
with the um, six individuals. That's good clarity. Ms. Timmons? Uh, Ms. Timmons, you're on mute. On the 12th, I have a study hub. And, um, but I'm usually back home by one o'clock. So if it's after one, it's okay. Okay. So, um, Ms. Kinsella are, and uh, Ms. Johnson, are we able to move finance so that we could potentially do um, the 10th, 11th, and 12th, or the 11th, 12th, and 13th? I would hate to book us for four nights in such an intense time. I'm going to check my calendar now. I don't think, um, I guess we can ask Mr. Donovan because if there's nothing major, um, getting to the end of the book, season two. Mr. Donovan, do you think we could change it from the 11th? Sure. May? We could probably find something, sure. Sure. All right. So is, does anyone have a preference between the, uh, which three nights that week? And then if we don't need a third night, that's well. Well, right now I have on the 12th, I'm committed. Um, okay, so how about the 10th, 11th, and 13th? Yeah. Okay, and I'm assuming these are evening interview, correct? Because we have members who work. Well, then if it's evening. Okay. They're according to your schedule, but more often than not, most board members are working also, and so they're in the evening. Yes. Okay. Let's say six-ish because that's the time of our other meetings these days. Okay, so not the 12th, wait, not the 12th because Ms. Johnson's not available, but the 10th, 11th, and 13th. Congratulations. You win the prize. That's the, the <laughs> that's shortest one. amount of time right. ever. That's one of, it didn't take you all 45 minutes to get to that. That's a good thing. <laughs> so now if you could decide on the three days, May 17th through the 21st, I hope it goes as easily. No. And I'm going to say good night. Thank you, Dr. Hill. Thank I appreciate you, your time Hi. this evening. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you as well. So, oh, wait, excuse me. Shh. Sorry. I have kids and dogs. <laughs> Um, and they were running like it's NASCAR through the side <laughs> of my, <laughs> where I am. Okay. The week of the 17th, we have curriculum on Monday and policy on Tuesday. Can we move our, our, um, committee meetings to the first week of the month there and then open up those nights? I can work with all of the committee heads, uh, okay. administration and board of ed, and try to get those maneuvered around or okay. since we have so much other work to get done. Right. May That's is it. going to be very challenging. So does anyone have any nights they cannot do the week of the 17th? Sandra? I'm sorry, Ms. Zeem. I just, my date was wrong. It's not the 5th, it's the 21st. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wednesday, April 21st, 2021, and it's a, it's day, it's, it's outpatient, so it's just that day, so if the, I would assume that even, I, I don't know how to, you know, it's assuming does, but right. it may be that that night I would be, you know, on a Zoom, I mean, as she said, people Zoom from bed. So right, I, well, I, it's in April or May. That's, that's, it's saying April, April 20. You have been scheduled. In Great. So that means you'll have two weeks to recover before the interviews. Well, I have other, I, I don't, I'm thinking that none of these, I have two other that I have to have a pre-op and I have to have a post-op kind of thing. Yep. But I think, again, I, think, I don't think they're going to be time intense. I think they're going to be in fact, some of them may even be telephone. You know, they do they do teleconferencing now, which is the darndest thing, which I prefer actually, by the way. <laughs> you know, wonderful. They just say, are you all right? And hopefully you say, yeah, call me another year. <laughs> yeah. I'd be glad to get it over with, I'll tell you that. But anyway. All right. So now, now we're looking at May, the week of the 17th. Does anyone have any conflicts 
those, those nights, if we can move our committee meetings. What were the, can you tell me which, what, how many, was it another three evenings? Mm -hmm. There would be three candidates, one a day. Um, and then you would need to decide not not tonight whether or not you wanted community engagement with regard to that. Okay. But it would be three three days because sometimes the candidates will want to see the schools, they want to see the district, and, and we can talk about that later. So you'll need three days. Okay. And then um, in the pre-COVID days, you would generally have dinner um, with the candidate and whomever the individual brought. And then, um, so you could have some socialization and then you would conduct the interview following that, so. Okay, so. Um, There's a, probably a pretty good chance on the 20th, we would have a JSSBC, right? The 27th. Oh, it's the 27th, all right. It's usually the last Thursday of the month. Oh, I, sorry, I missed that, my bad. That's okay. I wrote down the, um, executive committee meetings for the JSSBC on the wrong Wednesday in my calendar every other Wednesday for the entire year. So that was lovely. Okay, so the week of the 17th, does anyone have a night that does not work for them? Oh my gosh, we're so easy. Do we want to do, um, are we still gonna have, we're not gonna have, are we still gonna have budget then, Dan? When? The end of May. End of May. I hope not. Okay. So do we want to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Monday, Tuesday, and, Wednesday. And bear in mind, you're going to um, need to decide whether or not, when you're going to get together to decide on the one candidate. Oh, that's true. So we'll need Monday to do well, that. And well, it, Unless that you feel after the third or how many ever, the last candidate you want to try to decide, but I would tell you it is helpful if you sleep on it, but not too long um, that you make a decision. Um, that's why we do these one week and then the next week. So it's fresh in your mind, the, the differences with the candidates. And, but you're going to have to decide on a finalist. Okay. So we will work on that, whether we can do it. Um, but if you can get the three interview days down and then mull over how you're going to reach that final decision, if we could get that done, that, that is huge. Right. And I imagine you need a, a little bit of time to invite them back. So let's say Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the following week. Um, Ms. Kinsella, what do you think? Yeah, anyone else? The 18th, 19th, and 20th. Of what month? May. May. I'll be all right. Thank you. This, I will write everything down. Thank go you. ahead, Ms. Julio. Um, I'm just thinking that if we need if we need to interview three finalists and then maybe the night after we sleep on the third finalist interview, we want to make our decision. We should probably interview the people Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which would leave us with Thursday night to kind of make our decision. The week of the 10th. Unfortunately, Ms. Johnson's not available Wednesday. The week of the, the 12th. No, it's the week of week May 17th through the 21st. Yeah. We're looking at Hold on, I'm confused now. May 10th, the week of May 10th are your, your six candidates. Right. Now I the next week you're going to be interviewing three. Yes, I think Miss Julia was suggesting that the week of the 10th, no, no. we do our six, we, we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so we can talk. Oh, no. What? But I, we can't I, do that. You'll, you'll because... still need to. You'll still need to make a decision on which six are moving to the next three. Right. Which three of, we have to have them. So but we are going to need. We're either going to need to have a meeting on, on Friday. The, on or Friday, weekend. or I think as Sharon was mentioning, we should decide on. I mean, that doesn't give the candidates a lot of time. Ugh. Can yeah. I, what, what we do is we when we're interviewing. The week we interview, we tell every single person with whom we interview, would you be available these days? Because that's when the board will be interviewing six 
And then will you be available these days? Because that's when they'll be interviewing three. And to make arrangements, if they're not, um, to try to accommodate that. Okay. All right, so we have to worry about when we nine can get together to decide the the winnowing of the the six to three if we need to have a friday meeting or or a saturday meeting nobody wants to meet friday night or saturday i understand but i don't know how else to do it well my problem is i work weekends mm -hmm. and my schedule varies so some so if we're going to do in the morning if i have, I have to try to get my schedule changed because i usually work fridays a lot of times it's nights mm. And we can't get the nine of us together during the day. So I have a suggestion. What if we had our conversation to narrow it down? And, and again, I, I recognize it's a short amount of time notice to give to the final three. We had that conversation on the 17th and then we have the 18th, 19th, 20th, we have the second round of interviews. That won't work. That, no. That's a lot and of time. Okay. It's a lot of time between when you just interviewed and waiting four days. That, that is a lot of time. I don't think it'll work because we don't, again, we'd be stuck if we don't interview for the round of three, the second round of interviews. If we don't do it the 17th, the 18th, and the 19th, with the 20th being the night that we make our decision on our final candidate, then we're in the same situation where we may need to meet on a Friday. And, you know, we're getting very close to, you know, summer. <laughs> so I mean, I just think um, we may have to, we may have to meet on a Friday after would, we interview the six candidates. But would it be, would, would I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt Shannon. I'm Sharon, I was wondering for, I'm guessing it's mostly going to apply to Jen and Ray. What would be the earliest in the day you could meet on like Friday the 14th and then Paula, what would be like your stop time if we were to do the Saturday, like Saturday morning or Friday night? See, my problem is I don't get my schedule for about two weeks prior to. So I, would you usually work like the AM shift though or the PM shift on a Saturday? You don't I know? used to work nights all the time. I used to be the closer, but now they have me all hours of the day. They've shipped me around. So go ahead, Sharon. I, I just want to say that we can probably decide on the week of the 17th right now because we can interview if we're down to three candidates or possibly we'll be down to two, who knows. But if we interview them on the 17th, on the 18th and the 19th, then that leaves us that Thursday night, the 20th, to make our final decision on who we want to offer the position to. I know we have a problem the week before that where we may end up having to meet on a Friday, but that won't necessarily have to happen the week of May 17th, as long as we interview Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. I, I think that's wise, uh, Ms. Giglio. Thank oh, you. Ms. Cantella? I mean, there is a possibility that you will not have three finalists, that you could possibly have two, is that correct? Yes. There is possible, but I will cost, caution you. Remember I said people are interviewing you back that you may have a candidate that says I'm withdrawing mm -hmm. and you don't want to be left with one candidate, particularly since you haven't delved deeply into, I mean, you, you are, are doing the, the one mm -hmm. interview and the second interview you can get a whole lot more deep and you may, may change your minds, but people, mm -hmm. it doesn't happen very often, but I just need to warn you, somebody could drop out and you do not want to be left looking at one candidate. Okay. So we already know that, so we already know that it has to be the week of the 17th we need every night, guys, 6 p.m. every night. The week of the 10th, I would suggest the same thing, except so, somebody said they weren't available on the 12th. Was that, that, that was Paula. And I'm the 10th. You can't meet on the 10th uh -uh. of May? 
yeah, on the I have well, I can I have a post op uh, May 10th at 10:15 in the morning. It probably will be an hour. It's in Waltham, and it's so I don't know. It depends on what time and how long. 6 p.m. Yeah, so I should be able to be back by 6 p.m. Thank you. Okay. All right. So then the last question that we have is on the 14th. What time can the nine of us get together to vote on which of the which three of the six we can move forward? You're talking about April 14th, right? No, May. May. This is all May. I can do it any time that whole day. Me as well. That's why I'm putting it out to everybody else. So can I. Um, so I know that uh, Mr. Gorino and Ms. Bishop um, and Ms. Johnson all have work schedules that they have to be cognizant of. Um, so I guess it leaves it up to, to you guys. Um, I'm available with notice for whatever we want to do. Okay. And uh, I could. I could do the same thing. I could um, give them notice ahead of time. And so if we meet earlier in the day at three o'clock, I can take half a day or something like that. We have done a, a noon meeting before, but it lasted all afternoon. Um, would that work for anyone to do something lunchtime-ish? Ms. Wednesday, Johnson? Wednesdays, I usually work 11 to three. That's usually a given. Right, no, we're talking about Friday the 14th. Friday the 14th, I mean, I haven't, if you tell me, I'll just have to go into work and let them know. Okay. On the 14th, you know, to swap it out. They're okay. usually good to me because I'm, I'm always working. All right. Uh, Ray, you were saying three would work? Yeah, I, I could, I could uh, take the Friday off and have a long weekend. I'll be happy with that. Okay. <laughs> Right after a weekend of work, work. Into forever. We might need. We all will need a long weekend. <laughs> okay. Would you like to do earlier then? I mean, I think we're we're really down to. Um, Can we do noon? Really down to Miss Bishop um, and her time availability and Miss Johnson. Yep. I just have to. It'll be fine. All right. Okay. So let's say noon because that then will give time. Um, for Dr. Williams um, and Dr. Hill to notify the candidates. Okay, so I feel badly for anyone who's decided to watch this entire meeting because the last 20 minutes is just <laughs> calendars and it's not fun. Okay. Okay, and then um, Ms. Kinsella, will work with um, administration and the chairs of finance curriculum and policy um, to move those meetings somehow, some other time. Best of luck, guys. Okay. Were there any other decisions that needed to be made this evening? You were going to decide the week of the 17th through the 21st. Did you um, take Sharon's suggestion? I didn't, they did. I wrote, so, down, I wrote down 6 p.m. every night that week. So interviews Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll meet Thursday the 20th to make our decision. And decision. Yep. Uh-oh, Ms. Williams is breaking up again. Can you just send out a little reminder on all those dates to make sure we have them right? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Oh, we, we lost Dr. Williams. She did freeze. She did. I wrote it on this lovely um, calendar that Ms. Kinsella had given us that now rules my life. And, you know. Sorry, I lost all of you. Oh, good, you're back. I am back. So... Uh, so I don't know where we lost you, but we decided 6 p.m. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for the decision the week of the 17th. Okay. Does that work? Very good. That sounds great. Okay. These were the most important um, dates for us. And um, as I'm looking at the time. Yes. Um, 
will you um, did the did you want to take some time to look at the entire calendar so we can decide on the other dates in the future? Because these were the most important dates. I think the other dates regarding um, focus groups and the like were something that the ad hoc committee could work on because all nine of us don't yes. need to yes. be there. I guess I was um, the one date that we have to look at is the date that we bring the slate of candidates to you mm. so that we can put that wheel in motion to get the interviews with you scheduled. Okay. That is the week of, sorry, the week of April 24th. Um, no. Um, the uh, end of the week of May 3rd. Ah. Or no, is that bad? Uh, that's when I just think we moved all our committee meetings to. <laughs> um, the week of May 3rd, uh, we have our full board meeting on the 3rd. Um, I suppose any other day right now is open. Well, could you um, could you go into closed session if your week is really packed and we can come in at the end of your meeting, even though it would be late, I know, to give you, no. Uh, yes, theoretically you could. No, I don't think it would be um, pleasant for anyone to do that because those meetings tend okay. to be four or five hours long and we're all- okay not in our best mental state, especially the people who've been working since 7 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. Ms. Giulio? What, well, if it has to be sometime the week of May 3rd, why can't we do it Thursday the 6th? We can. Uh, Is that soon enough to get back to you, Ms. Williams? That's great. Thursday the 6th is perfect. Yeah. And that wouldn't interfere with our rescheduled um, committee meetings. Perfect. Who knows? All right, so 6 p.m. again. Perfect. And then um, I can work with the ad hoc committee on the other elements of it. And I know you've had um, a lot and I thank you so much for your time and attention. You did really well getting those dates. Honestly, you just won the new world record for setting <laughs> dates with nine board members, no less. So thank you for that. And um, any questions that you have, I know I'll be working and getting to know Stacy and Dana and others very well. And, um, you know, any questions that pop up? Um, I know Jessica, you can reach out to me or, or anybody really, and um, we'll, we'll go from there, but we'll be in contact to get everything else ironed out too. Actually, I just had one more question. So I know that we're going to work with the um, superintendent search committee to get our focus groups lined up. Um, are you going to reach out to um, in the individual board members and have those conversations? Yes, Deb okay. and I are going to um, work with Tara, actually, and we're going to give her some days and some time frames and then T Tara will reach out to you and say, do any of these work? If they don't, um, we can, we don't have to interview that week. We could, we could actually from this point on start interviewing with you, but Tara, it will probably work with you on that. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm, and thank you, Tara, as always. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So um, thank you, Dr. Williams. Does anyone have any other questions for Dr. Williams this evening? If you no. do, stream them through Tara or um, Jessica, and we'll be happy to answer them. And you have all those um, attachments when you have time to look through them. And you've been very attentive and very helpful and more details start to unfold, but we didn't want to completely overwhelm you. Um, but hopefully you have a much better idea of how this will unfold and um, the collaboration and um, the transparency, because honestly, um, 
just in, in closing, I'll just tell you, when you engage your stakeholders as much as you will be through all these different avenues and you follow that profile, you're going to have automatic support of the person you select, which is enormous because that individual cannot begin with a group of people um, not, not supporting him or her. So I think um, it will be a very, very smooth transition for that individual. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. And so for our next steps, uh, Ms. Brown um, and the ad hoc committee will try and meet this week um, to start working on the focus groups and the other items on your list that you presented to us this evening. Um, so Ms. Brown or Ms. Hines or Ms. Kinsella will be in touch um, about that in the next day or two. Perfect. Okay. All right, great, thank you. All thank right, you. Is, is there any other business before the board this evening? Oh, seeing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Good night, everyone. Oh my goodness, good night, Ms. Good Dr. Night. Williams. Nice meeting you. All right, so the motion to adjourn was by Ms. Johnson, seconded by Ms. Giglio. Unless you had a question, Ms. Giglio. No, no I was seconding the motion. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Ms. Bishop votes yes. Ms. Giglio? Yes. Ms. Raymond? Yes. Ms. Odin? Yes. Ms. Brown? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Garino? Yes. Ms. Zeem? We've lost her. Okay. Uh, Ms. Timmons? Uh, Ms. Timmons had to leave. She had another Zoom. And now I can't hear you, Ms. Bishop. Ms. Bishop? Is it me? I can't hear you, Jen. You hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Motion passes 7 to 0 at 8, 18 p.m. Thank you so much. Have Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.